Hello? Um, great wise one? Are you utterly daft?
Horn found himself face to face with a whale larger than any living creature he had ever seen with his own eyes. You? Are you the Great Wise One? Hmm. I don't know about great or wise, but there is certainly one of me. Overwhelmed though he was by the rather wondrous fact that he was having a conversation with a whale, Horn still felt the urgency of his quest. I have little time to spare. The curse I've just saved you from, it must be undone. The Pygon curse? It has been upon us for a thousand years. I think you can spare a moment for me, can't you? A thousand years? I'm afraid so. Pygon, you see, do not age or die. Much knowledge could Horn sense contained in the mind of the great wise one. You know the ways of Pygon? I'm sure this thing will be happy to tell you many lies. Lie? Why would I tell lies? Lies are boring. Would you eat a pillow if it looked like a loaf of warm bread? So what have the Pygon been doing for the last thousand years? The Great Wise One seemed sad to Horn. Perhaps dismayed that ignorance of Pygon lore had allowed the curse to fall over the lands of men and beyond. Ah, the old tales have gone out of fashion, I see. A pity. The Pygon are building something. That is what they do. That is why they exist. To build something. Gord, as usual, could not help interjecting his particular kind of nonsense into the proceedings. You should be helping us build it. We are going to build it no matter what. You could at least get a bit of credit when it's done. When what's done? The door to... <laughs> <laughs> they say the smartest pygon is still as dumb as the rock he's made of. The Pygon building a door did not sound to Horn like a thing to take lightly, for who knew what would lay on the other side of such a construct? I have to stop them before they can finish building this door. I said nothing about a door. You misheard me. There is no door. And in any case, I'd wager the door is being finished as we speak. The door we misheard you say nothing about? I like you even less than I like this boy. These mysterious new developments would not sway Horn from his quest. Door or no, I must undo the curse. Huh? And why you, boy? Why has a boy of your tender years been sent against the Pygon Empire to undo the strongest, darkest curse known in magic lore? What have you accomplished so far? Well, I lifted the curse from my village. And how did you do that? I... I defeated the Pygon form of the village chieftain. As well. You seem to have lifted the curse from my home. I did? I did! Indeed! Horn started to see the point that the Great Wise One was trying to make. By? By defeating you. The master of this realm, in your Pygon form. So if you wish to lift the curse... From all of Reigns. It stands to reason that... That I must find the king and the queen and defeat their Pygon forms. The Pygon curse did not seem so frightening or mysterious to Horn now that he had some idea of how it might be undone. Pygon have rules, lad. And if you know them, you can defeat them. And now, I must thank you, Horn, for all you have done. Ever will you be welcome in Sudin, once you have finished your quest. Thank you. To the mountain city you now go, with a current to speed you on your way. The Great Wise One swam in a circle, then pulled up to the rock to offer Horn a ride. Climb aboard. To the capital. To Westerness. To your doom. Horn knew now what he had to do, but he knew nothing of what dangers he faced, of what Pygon forms he had yet to encounter. Horn had faced down horrors no boy of his age should have seen. But 
There was no one else who could save Reigns from the Pygon curse. But what if Gord was right? What if his quest was ultimately futile? If Horn fell, who then would there be to fight the Pygon curse? No, Horn could not fail. He must not.